welcome. You're watching DCTV's very first episode of Studio 901. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Kiana Faircloth. You're probably wondering, what exactly is Studio 901? Well, this show is DCTV's greatest exploration of the art that is among us. On Studio 901, we will spotlight local emerging and established artists that are creating right here in the DMV. With us, you'll discover some of the area's greatest treasures, some of our best kept secrets, and hear some never before told stories about living the creative life. Joining me today on Studio 901 is violinist Chelsea Green. With performances often described as passionate, vivacious, electrifying, and innovative, Billboard charting recording artist Chelsea Green brings the unmatched tone, richness, and vibrancy of violin and viola playing to audiences in a whole new way. A native of Houston, Texas, Green was born into a family of jazz and funk musicians. Though inundated with music of all genres, she focused on classical music, studying both privately and publicly at performing arts schools in the Houston public school system. Green went on to receive a scholarship for classical viola studies at the University of Texas at Austin, where she graduated summa cum laude. Green then went on to receive her master's degree in viola performance from the Peabody Conservatory of the Johns Hopkins University and is currently a doctoral candidate at the University of Maryland College Park. While studying classical masterpieces, Green had a vision to form an ensemble that could utilize live string performance to enhance current popular music, just as it did in the days of Marvin Gaye, Bill Withers, Michael Jackson, and more. In 2010, her dream became reality upon the formation of her ensemble, The Green Project. Chelsea Green and The Green Project tear down all stereotypes of the violin and viola by fusing traditional classical technique with popular favorites and enticing original songs in various genres, including R&B, pop, soul, funk, jazz, alternative, hip hop, gospel, and more. She's definitely someone that we needed to spotlight here on Studio 901 because she is one of those hidden gems in the DMV. Welcome to Studio 901, Chelsea. Thank you, Kiana. I'm excited to be here. Here at Studio 901, we always ask our guests right off the bat, number one, at what age did you start playing? I started playing at a very young age, five years old. Wow. Yes. And who would be some of your inspirations musically as far as artists, anybody that inspires your sound? Well, of course, a lot of artists have inspired my sound, but I would have to say my family is first. My father is an accomplished jazz and funk percussionist and drummer. My uncle is a very accomplished uh, straight-ahead jazz saxophonist. My grandfather is a jazz and wow. blues saxophonist as well, and my grandmother was a beautiful singer, so it's kind of in the blood. Wow, yeah, so you come from point. great musical stock then. Absolutely, and trying to continue that legacy. Being born into a family of jazz and funk musicians and classical musicians, what was your experience in studying classical music? Classical music always brought a lot of new challenges, and I feel that having such an eclectic mix of musical background to draw from, I was mm -hmm. able to approach it with a very open mind, mm. which helped me get through a lot. Classical music can be a very competitive field. It can be very difficult. The technique is, is challenging to master, and there are very young children playing very well at a very high level. Yes. So it's, again, it's very competitive, but I always knew what was behind the music that I wanted to make instead of it just being about the notes on a page. So having that in the family and having that encouragement really gave me that support that I needed to continue. Mm -hmm. You are on the brink of receiving your doctorate in music. You could easily have focused on a professional music career and foregone the pursuit of education. Why is it important to you to achieve academic success in addition to building your musical career? 
That's a great question. I mean, I feel like education is so paramount in both in our community now, just in in what we need to give to the next generation. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up and, and studying classical music, I didn't have examples that looked like me in the school or, or they're providing private lessons mm -hmm. or you know coming through town and touring regularly showing me the possibilities of the versatility of my instrument. So I always was very passionate to not only perform but also share that experience with that next generation, share it with those that are going to continue mm -hmm. to carry on what it is that we do. And I think it's very important to allow students and young people, any color, any ethnicity, any income level, yes. the opportunity to grasp actual technique and understand how a good solid foundation on your instrument can help you grow musically and, uh, and open up so many doors to playing classical music but also pop and R&B, jazz, mm -hmm. and do anything. Absolutely. It seems like more and more classically trained musicians are finding their way into popular music genre. You recently played with J. Cole, yep. Stevie mm -hmm. Wonder, and others. Have these opportunities made violin seem more cool to your students? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's the first thing every time I say, you know, I got to play with J. Cole, silence comes, wow. comes over the room. And so you know that that's how powerful those artists are in their eyes. And that's why it's so important for us to be able to resonate at that level and show them studying your instrument can get you there. Yes. Studying your instrument and becoming proficient in a way that will put you at that level professionally will open so many doors and, and opportunities. So yes. that's definitely a tool that, that we use for cool. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You've recently been working with Orc Kids with the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. Talk about that initiative a little bit. It's been great to work with them in our educational outre um, outreach initiative. And we are able to go into schools in the Baltimore City area. And some of them have established music programs, others don't. But because Orc Kids is in their school, they, they do have access to stringed instruments mm -hmm. and lessons on those instruments. So we like to take things that they're learning at a very elementary level and kind of show them what the future of that will look like through mm. my own original music as well as we cover some popular songs with our own arrangements. And the most fun part is we create a song with the students at the end of the workshop and they really come away feeling like they're a songwriter, like they're a composer, and feeling empowered to do that in their own study. Mm. And that's really the joy of, of the whole project. Awesome. When we return, we'll talk about some of Chelsea Green's musical inspirations. Stay close, we'll be right back. This is Studio 901. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F, A, S, T, fast. Thank you, dear. Well, you're very supple. It's like I was at your age. 
Back then, I was a sex expert. Used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? Welcome back to Studio 901. I'm chatting with professional violinist and educator Chelsea Green. Early on, you mentioned some of your inspirations, but your music blends several different genres from classical, jazz, R&B, soul, and everything else in between. <laughs> um, how did that come about, you blending those genres to create your sound? I just really wanted to create original music that I would enjoy listening to. And I feel that the blending of those genres is just a testament to how much I enjoy music mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. And I'm always saying that's what we do is just play music. Everybody wants to put a, an exact label on it. But, you know, I really love pop. I love R&B. I love jazz. I like fusion. I like free jazz. I love yes. classical. Like, I can get into everything. And I really feel that coming from that mindset, that's what I put into my original music and hope to execute. Now, Chelsea, you know, lots of classical musicians aren't really naturally able to blend genres <laughs> in the way that you have successfully. Okay. Now, how were you able to cross that bridge from classical into pop, R&B, all of that? Because me personally, being trained classically in piano, I have no jazz chops. <laughs> Don't ask me to play anything free form. So how are you able to accomplish that? You know what, I am grateful to God that I had a very patient and extremely talented and accomplished jazz musician for a father mm -hmm. who has worked with some jazz legends and I, I consider him one myself. And I mean, he's taught Chris Dave, Make he's condition. worked with, yep, <laughs> with Jason Moran and I mean, Eric Harland, like some, some people that are really making waves on the jazz scene now. And he encouraged me very young to play gospel music, play jazz, play things that you enjoy listening to on the radio. We would, we would have jam sessions at the house with him on drums and me on violin. Mm. And uh, I even was able to be in his program at the Summer Jazz Workshop and I studied jazz voice. That's when I first started taking jazz voice. Wow. As well as expanding my, my violin jazz chops as well. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about The Green Project's second release mm -hmm. and full length album the Green Room. Yes, yes. Awesome album, first Thank off. Thank you. <laughs> How has it been received both locally and nationally? It has been received well. By the grace of God, I'm just very humbled that people have enjoyed it. It was actually on the Billboard chart in wow. the first week of its release. We, we got to number 22 on the Contemporary Jazz album chart. Impressive. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, just completely blew my mind to get an email from Billboard saying, Hi, we don't know you, but uh, you're on the chart tomorrow, so <laughs> wow. we need to get your information. Um, that I just was in tears, but so to know that people support and enjoy your artistry and enjoy your music really, really means a lot to me, and I'm so grateful for the support both locally and, and at the national level. Absolutely. Now, you record on your own label, if you will, sure. or under your own. You're an individual artist yourself. Yes. How does that make a difference in the music that you put out and produce? It makes a huge difference. I have complete creative control, which is awesome to be able to have an idea and just continue to develop it into a project that you independently produce, create, and share. And mm -hmm. um, to have that that ability to control what, what you're, or just to have that control of what your message is oh, yes. is actually, you know, really, really huge. So I'm grateful for that as mm -hmm. well. Now, you've performed with some big artists, <laughs> Grammy winning artists and nominated artists as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you have aspirations yourself of winning a Grammy with the Green Project? And is that a benchmark for success for you at all? How, how do you, wow. what's your take on that? You know what? I think that it's great to be recognized for the, for the effort that you make. And of course, that would be wonderful. But at the end of the day, when I have somebody come up to me after we've per 
well, after we've done a show and performed, and they said, you know, I came into this not knowing what was going to happen, mm -hmm. but I am walking away your new biggest fan. <laughs> like, I did not know violin could sound like that. I didn't know that you all made that kind of music. That was a winning moment for me. Every time we, we, we hear that, I feel like I've won an award. Absolutely. So, you know, I definitely feel that it's it's great to be recognized. And, of course, a Grammy would be awesome mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, <laughs> to, to have and share with the group because it's great to be recognized for your effort. But, you know, just having the opportunity to perform each and every time is an award in and of itself. There you go. Yeah. Now, when you play, you go all in. How many strings, <laughs> bows, do you go through? <laughs> well, the, the count is up to six. I have six bows, and I try to regulate all that hair popping because it is <laughs> it is not the cheapest thing to maintain. Um, and as but you, it makes for a great show. <laughs> it it's it like, makes for the show. Like, <laughs> but uh, but it's it, it it is a lot of fun. And I honestly don't do that. It's like it's it's not intended to to do that by any means. But um, I just think that just shows that kind of passion that we put into the yes. performance every time. Absolutely. Now, when we come back, we'll talk about how Chelsea is a professional musician in life and how she's turned that passion into a career. Stay right here. This is Studio 901. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed as our nation is with abundant physical resources, and inspired as it should be, with the high purpose to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all. We approach this problem of re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. We have a big problem and we need your help. It's happening on college campuses, at bars, at parties, even in high schools. It's happening to our sisters and our daughters. Our wives and our friends. It's called sexual assault and it has to stop. We have to stop it. So listen up. If she doesn't consent or if she can't consent, it's rape, it's assault. It's a crime, it's wrong. If I saw it happening, I was taught you have to do something about it. If I saw it happening, I speak up. If I saw it happening, I'd never blame her. I'd help her. Because I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. We need all of you to be part of the solution. This is about respect. It's about responsibility. It's up to all of us to put an end to sexual assault. And that starts with you. Because one is too many. Welcome back to Studio 901. I'm here with professional violinist and educator, Chelsea Green. So we know the life of a musician can be a little bit of a struggle Indeed. sometimes. Mm -hmm. How have you managed to stay afloat both personally and professionally? It is kind of one of those things where it's a, it's a step out on faith. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I prayed about for a really, really long time and just ask God for provisions and, and just a way to make it possible because it, every performance is different now that I come from a totally creative place where I can have said, you know, I've immersed everything in me, mm -hmm. in, like in, into this one show all day and um, it's just so much more fulfilling. Yes. And, and I think that it's definitely a day by day thing. You gotta mm -hmm. have a very strict budget huh? and, and you have to plan and you know, focus your finances in a different way, but it's, it's been a blessing. Now, with all of that in mind, and all the things you have to sacrifice, mm -hmm. when did you decide that you wanted to make being a musician your career? 
because it takes courage to really pursue your passion and do it in a professional manner. Absolutely. I feel like I finally came around um, a couple years ago after advancing to candidacy in my doctoral program, I knew that I wanted to leave that program with a foundation of a career that I could really help kind of weigh out what I felt was a doctoral recipient. Yes. You, you know what I mean? And, and I think it's important to focus on your professional career at an age where you'll still have that energy and mm -hmm. focus and time to really devote fully to projects. So don't have a family or anything yet. So it was a good time, I think, to just go ahead and make that a priority. Absolutely. Now, what advice would you give to someone who wants to make their passion their thing that they do in life, that they want to go full force into it, pursue that passion, but they might not know how to do it. What advice would you give that person? I would first tell them that they would need to pray and and really and, and really focus <laughs> focus what what it is they want to do and and write out their plan because I think it's something when you see it before you you have a different sense of accomplishment and and I believe that you would go about getting it in a different way once yeah. you've set those goals for yourself. It's it's kind of like self-guided study when you're studying online. Yeah. I feel like, you know, there's nobody there kind of going over your head like, this is due here and this is due right. here and this is when it needs to be done. It's really self-propelled. You got to drive that train. You got to drive it. <laughs> you you got to drive it. So yourself. they need to take some good driving lessons, buckle that seatbelt and, and go for it because it's it's now or never you know it's so true planning is so important I, and I found mm -hmm. personally that anything that I have set to paper yes. and have written down and sort of declarations that I made to yes. myself some kind of way you are able to foresee those dreams and they come to reality easier absolutely yeah it's it's an attainable goal because it's tangible mm -hmm. absolutely now is there a new project that we can expect from the green project can can you give us a little sneak peek into <laughs> what the sound is going to be like kiana just for you girl yes. because i love you oh. um we are working on a new project and it is you know it's it's still new our first our our most recent album just just came out so we're still kind of working on new music though and it's gonna have a lot of funk yes I can say that and it's definitely going to you know be edgy mm -hmm. it's gonna be jazzy funky so you know we 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 will have a lot of interesting things in the mix there awesome you always keep us on the edge of our seats <laughs> so we can't wait but tell the folks where they can find out more about you and your music Oh, I hope that everybody can join us at uh, www.chelseagreen.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Our Facebook is Chelsea Green and the Green Project. And we're on Instagram and Twitter at Green Violinist. So we hope everybody can become a member of the Green Team. Well, all right. Thank you so much for being on the first episode of Studio 901. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Yes. We'll be right back with more of Chelsea Green. This is Studio 901. is no less than any other family. I'm Drew Brees, and being a dad means the world to me. And one of the most important things any parent can do is make sure their kids get active at least 60 minutes each day. Studies show that physical activity not only helps kids stay healthy, 
it can enhance important skills like concentration and problem solving, which can improve academic performance. This means physical activity can help your kids in the most important game of all, life. Today, one out of every four American kids is Hispanic. Many of the future doctors who will care for us, the scientists and entrepreneurs of our country, can be your kids. And the Hispanic Scholarship Fund helps you prepare, plan, and pay for your kids' college education. Thank you all so much. We want to thank DCTV again for having us. We've had so much fun with you all here today. This is a little Shaka Khan to take us out of here. Ain't nobody. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you for tuning in to Studio 901. It's been a pleasure sitting down and talking with Chelsea Green, who is one that should be on your musical radar now. Remember, Studio 901 spotlights emerging artists from all over the DMV that are creating and performing right here in our own backyard. If you want to find out more about what you saw today, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook at your DCTV or visit our website at dctv.org. Before you leave, I want to leave you with this quote from American artist Andy Warhol. Don't think about making art, just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it. While they are deciding, make even more art. Join us for another episode of Studio 901 where we just might spotlight you. I'm Kiana Fairclough, until next time. <laughs>